I know most of your career you did hailstorms. That was where you did most of your work. But what was your first yeah. hurricane? What year was that? 2004. 2004. So it took you four yeah. years to get to your first hurricane. Yeah. And uh, was that because of, you know, this is a learning moment for a lot of people. Was that because there just wasn't a lot of hurricanes or you were busy there doing other any. stuff when the hurricanes came in? Um. I think it was quiet. I think it was pretty quiet. That there were some, there were like little ones, but I was busy. You know, I would get on a storm and I would work that storm until Halloween or like the first or second week of November. Usually from from April until going into November, I was working hail somewhere. Right? And and a lot of the th back then, I don't know if it's the same way to these days. I don't, it doesn't sound like it is, but back then I was often was the last guy there. You know, on on hailstorms, um, so, so it wasn't until. You... So go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say it wasn't until 2004. My first hurricane was Hurricane Ivan um, in Alabama. Okay, so whenever you, whenever you were doing these these uh, hailstorms, you know, these windstorms, and of course a lot of these had you know some of these were probably small and just you and a few guys went to it. And then some of these were probably big where you had a big help room. And yeah. so after you had some experience under your belt, you knew what you were doing. And, you know, I know some companies saying you got to, you have to at least make an appearance occasionally in the, in the help room. Um, and you would go in there and you would see new people. What was your, what was your thoughts when you saw all these new people? Did you want to say, Hey, look, do yourself a favor and run now. Or did you, uh, <laughs> or did you sit there and just watch them and go, Oh God, these people are screwed. You know, was the attitude from the people that had some experience on their belt? Cause, cause what happens today is, is that, is that people that have been in the business. I mean, even as little as a year or two, will sit there and scoff at the people that are coming in that don't know anything like, Oh, I, I right. know everything. Or like, you know, look, yeah, you're an idiot. You're not ready for this. There's this, just this condescending attitude of the, of a lot of people that have experienced towards the people that are just coming in. And I'm not saying that necessarily you would have had that attitude towards people, but did you see that attitude back then? Is it just nothing changed or was it pretty much the oh, same when you would walk into that? The attitude, the attitude if, uh, up against or about AI, IAs is was from yeah, the carrier in sucks. particular. Yeah, right. Um, we'll get to that some other time. Um, was it and still is to this very day is is pretty much universally disdain because the 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 there's such a high variability in the quality of training that adjusters get, and the quality of experience that they have, and the quality of mentorship or even existence of mentorship that adjusters have to know what to do and when to do it, right? My attitude, and I've never been asked that question before like that, but when I would see people, especially on those first hurricanes, any hurricane, my first thought was, is this job was so good to me, I'm doing so well at it that I think everybody should be able to do well at it. And so I wanted to like take every single one of them under a wing and say, hey, listen, if you don't do anything else, do these five things or whatever it was, right? To, to help right. them kind of not wash out. And I, and I did that whenever, wherever I could, um, but you couldn't do it for everybody, right? Which right. is honestly, Hurricane Ivan was the, the first seed was planted for Adjuster TV right there because I was like, well, maybe there is a way, some way, someday. And I was, for years, I tried all different kinds of things. I tried going to the, some of the bigger IA firms and saying, hey, listen, why don't, I, you know, you guys just, when we do a hurricane, I want to help you guys like retain more adjusters and have better cycle time and, and not have all these guys wash out. And they spend, it's, it's a business write off for, for IA firms to spend hundreds and hundreds and even millions of dollars on advances for adjusters that are never going to close a claim, right? Because you can, you, I don't know about now, but you used to be able to, you could say, I need 2000 bucks or 3000 bucks or whatever. And they would just give it to you as an advance on your pay. And then it would just take it out of your pay. If you don't close a claim, they just spent $2,000 right on you for nothing. And day rates, right? They, they give day rate to adjusters for just to hang out and do orientation. And they never close a claim, right? Or hourly or whatever people that they're spending a lot of money for people that aren't going to, they're not going to get paid back for it. I wanted to help with that because I thought that was ridiculous because they weren't doing anything to, it didn't seem like they were doing anything to stop that. And the people that were washing out, I'm like, well, 
it could maybe a lot of those people do need to wash out and it's just not right for them but there's a lot of people that maybe they just needed the right hand hold at the right moment just to like yeah. latch on and then they become like a great asset to the industry and so that was my my attitude you know and, and ended up having a great career and you know being successful and all that kind of stuff and i kept getting rebuffed the walls the stiff arm right well you know we don't want to do that I baffled. I couldn't figure out why. Um, it was just a, it was a write off for them. They the the numbers on a spreadsheet somewhere made it work out better for them. I I'm not going to begrudge them for making those, a decision like that. So that was what pushed me to say, you know what? Screw this. I'm just going to do it myself. Right. And this was wasn't until like the, the twenty after Sandy in particular in 2012 is when I started really thinking about it and. Um, I had a blog for a while on it and stuff, and, I, and I, but it wasn't until I, I don't know, the YouTube thing, that just kind of popped up in like 2017. I was like, you know what? Why don't I just do video? I mean, YouTube's a big thing. Yeah. So anyway, and I don't want to make myself sound like I'm some sort of angel or whatever, and I'm just coming in to like help everybody because, you know, I was <laughs> trying to help people, right. but, you know, I also saw an opportunity there to maybe I could build a business around it um, and help myself, right? And And... Take what I've I've learned, my experience as an adjuster, and see if I could figure out a way to maybe help build this like more standardized, you know, just across the board sort of like a training or or like some kind of virtual mentorship or whatever. Where, you know, the the things that let's put it this way, the things that I teach in like the fast track to deployment, and then I've got an adjuster TV plus and everything, are the things that when I would take adjusters. And especially like when I was a field manager and I could do it, I've got them. They're under my wing right there. If you're, if you ride along with me or if I ride along with you as a, as a field manager supporting you and I'm there to help you and help and train you, this is, this is what we're, you're going to, I'm going to teach you. Right. And it's, so I put all that into fast track to deployment, everything I, t I taught adjusters on hurricane Sandy and prior to that and after that um, is what I build my whole training paradigm around. And then of course we add on to that, the exact made and the stability and all the rest of that stuff, you know, the, the more hard skills, but the core of that, those, those programs and the core of everything I talk about is the customer service and the time management things, which are the, the things that people just, you can't, there's no certification. Well, there is a certification for it, my certification, but, up until then, there wasn't one, right, where, you know, an IA firm, and this is how I, I pitch it when I when I bring a new partner on board, which, by the way, we just picked up team one. Um, when I bring a new IA firm partner on board, I explain to them, this, this is what I'm indoctrinating my students into, and this is what we test them on, is time management, claims process, how to be efficient, how to, how to, how to take the, all the moving parts and all the cats that are going everywhere and get them all going in one line, right? If all the oars are going the same way, right? That's what I'm doing and that's what they need. That's what the IA firms need. They need people to show up and be able to get going with minimal supervision. Because it might, it might be that some, some catastrophic events, you know, when you walk into a help room, and you've seen this, James, you walk into a help room on a, on a big hurricane and there's there's two people in there helping. There's one long table and it's three people deep all the way around. It's the room is standing room only, right? And nobody's getting any help in that situation, right? And so that's what you got to compete with. You know, maybe you've got a question that could take the help room person 15 minutes to help you with, but it's going to take him three hours to get to you, right? You'd need to be able to hit the ground running on this. It's not enough. And this is the thing that I... I, I I talk about so much and I don't know that it's sinking in and, and it may be that when new people show up to the industry, they just find it or whatever that they don't, they're not hearing it right away. They're going to the Facebook groups or whatever, and they're hearing other things, but getting on rosters, if I, if I just got out of high school and I had never had a job before in my entire life, I could get on a roster. No problem. It's, it's I'm on, you're just on, right? I'm not going to get any work from that. Right, so I, I still have to do like get the exact made and the licenses and get some training or whatever, but none of that stuff matters if you get on your first storm deployment and or claim you get hand you claims and you just can't you can't close them. They don't care if you have a PhD in Xactimate if you can't close a claim or if you if you have terrible customer service and you just can't you cannot 
to develop yourself into somebody who's who's there to serve and who can do this work and be good at it, they're going to fire you. DFW or NFW or whatever it was. NFW. No freaking way. <laughs> right? That's how Adjuster <laughs> TV came about. And, you know, my, my career, I've handled, I think I've handled, I haven't handled every type of claim. You just told me about a claim that you just got that I've, I had like SWAT team ones, but never one where it was like, there's yeah. Yeah. like body parts and stuff. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's set up for this Thursday, by the way. Yeah. So, well, we'll be we'll, interested we'll, to hear we'll about that, back one. On that one. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions. Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one. All right. You there? Somewhere. Okay. You're gone. Oh, just sitting here enjoying my Triscuit, choking on it for when you get back. You're going to listen to me chew.